All right, Kurt here with Teach Mom How. Are you excited to learn how to make a slideshow with music and photos and videos, whatever you want to add to it, on your computer using iMovie? iMovie's the best. Let's go. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to edit your video with pictures or photos and music using iMovie on your Mac, on your desktop, okay, on your computer. So this is what we're going to go through. Feel free to skip ahead to any of these chapters by going down into the description and clicking on the one you want to skip ahead to if you already know or if you think you can figure out what I'm explaining. But first we need to gather all of our photos that we want to use and or videos into one place so that we can then bring them into, um, into iMovie so we can edit them. All right. Then once we've got them gathered, we need to organize iMovie so that we can stay organized as we make our video. Then we need to import the photos or pictures or videos into iMovie so we can edit them. Then we need to choose our music, get it ready, and import that music into iMovie. Then we need to add our music to the video. Then we need to add our photos to the video. Now you may choose to add your photos before you add your song. I like to add my song before I add my videos because I like to edit my photos and, and sorry, I like to add my song before I add my photos and videos because I like to edit the photos and videos in the slideshow or in the video to kind of match the feel of the song, okay? And then you're going to customize the motion of the photos, you know, like do they zoom in, do they pan, do they tilt, do they just sit there still? You're going to customize that and then you're going to add transitions to the photos if you choose to, then titles if you choose to, that's where it says grandma's birthday party or whatever kind of titles you want to put on there. Um, then any finishing touches, this is basically just watching it, looking for obvious mistakes and fixing them, and then adding or taking away anything that you feel you want to add to or take away from the video before finalizing it. Then exporting it, that's just where you like make a shareable file of the video, so you can then share it wherever you choose to share it. And then we're going to go over file sharing how to upload it to YouTube if that's what you choose to do, how to put it on Facebook if that's what you choose to do, or Instagram, okay? So let's get started now, and we'll dive in and show you how to do all these things. Again, if you want to skip ahead, go to the description and click on the chapter you want to skip ahead to. Okay, step one with iMovie. We need to gather all of our photos or videos into one place so that we can then bring them in to our, into iMovie so we can edit them. This is probably, in my opinion, the most difficult part um, because not everybody has their photos well organized or knows how to get them into one place. So I'm going to show you a few options, uh, but ultimately you're going to have to figure out where your photos are and how to get them to one place. I'm just going to kind of show you some principles so you can get that all ready and gathered, okay? Okay, so here's what I recommend. I recommend that in Finder, under Documents, you make a folder by going up to, you got to be in Finder, by the way. This is, just to clarify, this is the little smiley face guy down here, bottom left. Okay, in Finder, go to, go to Documents, and then go File, New Folder. And name that folder whatever this project's called. We'll call it the Reunion, or let's do Birthday. slideshow. Call it whatever's relevant, obviously, to the project you're doing, okay? And then I need to get all of my photos and music and anything else I might be using into this folder that I just created called Birthday Slideshow, all right? So we'll just leave that to the side right now. All right, now, there's a couple ways to do this depending on where my pictures are, okay? If my pictures are on my phone, the easiest way to do this is to um, plug my phone, if it's an iPhone, you can't, you can't do what I'm about to show you if it's an Android, but if it's an iPhone, easiest way to do this, if they're all on your phone, is to plug your phone into your computer and then go into iMovie and import those videos, okay? I'm going to show you how to do this now. So first off, you need your little lightning cable. That's the cable that charges your phone. A 
I'm grabbing mine now. You need to plug that into your phone and into your computer. It's going to automatically open the Photos app. Okay, so this is where I would import stuff into um, the Photos app, but since we're using iMovie, we need to come back to iMovie here and uh, import our photos. Now, what I'm about to show you now is part of keeping your iMovie organized, okay? So to keep your iMovie organized, you need to first create a new movie. And by the way, I'm in projects. If you're in iMovie and it looks something like this, let me show you. Show you an open project. If you're in, the, if it looks something like this, that means you're in an open project. You're in an open uh, video that you're editing. Go back to projects right here, and click create new. Okay, we're gonna make a new movie, and we also want to stay organized by creating a new event. Okay, we can right click or hold down control on our keyboard, hold down control and click if we don't have a right click option. And that will pop up this menu. Under this menu, we can choose new event. Again, this is important just to stay organized and name this birthday slide show. Okay, and so once we've done this, I'm in here, I can now import media. And this is where I'm going to import it straight from my phone if I've got this all on my iPhone. Click Import Media. And you'll see I can find folders that might have photos or videos I want to use in here. But I know it's on my phone, so I'm going to click on User's iPhone. All right. And I'm going to go find a video to import. Now, if I want to change this to all clips, it will show me everything that's on my phone, as well as photos, okay? And if you've already imported stuff to your computer, you might need to deselect this so that it will show you everything and not hide stuff that you haven't um, imported. Hide the import button here. Okay, and then you can select your clips. You can select whatever you want to select to import and click import selected. Now, or you can click off and click import all and that will import everything on your phone. Now, if you want to select multiple clips, but not everything what to import from your phone, what you're going to do is you're going to hold down the command button or the Apple button and click on which clips you'd like to select clips or pictures. In my case, it's mostly pictures. And then you're going to click import selected and that's going to bring these all into right here and we're good to go and I just realized something that I wasn't aware of until right now so it's good I got this error that the iPhone by default makes it in this uh, weird format HEIC so I can't import those straight into here. I can import my videos, okay? Um, but I'll show you how we get our pictures since they're not here, okay? What we're going to need to do is go to our photos library. And this will have everything. If we have our stuff linked with iCloud, everything we've taken pictures of will be stored here. 
Um, if not, we can go to the user's iPhone and we can import whatever is not on here already. Okay, so photos. Now here what I'm going to do is I'm going to just select a handful of pictures. Select one, then hold command and get these ready. It can be pictures or videos, it doesn't matter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to export these, whatever ones I choose to use in my slideshow. I'm going to export them to that folder I set up for the birthday slideshow by going File, Export, Export 16 Items, right here. Okay. Photo kind JPEG, leave that alone. Videos 1080p, leave that alone. And then click Export. It's going to ask me where I want to export them to here in a second. And this pops up my little finder thing. I need to go to that folder I created where I'm keeping all of my clips and photos organized. So under Documents in my case, and then I have the Birthday Slideshow. Click Export. Now this is going to do its thing. See this? That's its progress. It's cranking them out. Okay, so that is how you'll download your clips and photos from, or sorry, that's how you'll get your clips and photos from your um, Apple Photo Library into a folder so that you can then import them into iMovie and use them in your video uh, slideshow. Now, depending on where else you have your clips, it's basically the same idea or your photos but you need to get them into one place, into one folder, so that you can bring them all in to iMovie together. Um, so if, if I don't cover the exact scenario of where you get your photos, depending on where you have them saved uh, and into iMovie, please leave a comment and I'll help you out as best I can. But other common scenarios are you may have them on a hard drive somewhere, maybe you've put them on a CD, um, that's really simple. You would just, and I don't have an example to show you right now, but you would just open two different finder windows right here. You'd navigate one to the drive. Just pretend that this is the, um, just pretend that this is the drive with all my photos. I go to the folder with the photos. Let's say that these are the photos. I would select them all. I can click out here and drag, or I can select one and hold shift select multiple and I select all of the photos that I want from this hard drive or the CD in this hypothetical example and I just click and drag them into the folder in my case birthday slideshow the folder that you're creating with all of your uh, pictures that you're going to use for this video okay and, and then another common scenario of where these might be is they may be on your um, Google Drive or Amazon photos so let me show you on on uh, Google photos how you would um, navigate to this. Got it open right here, okay. So you go into your Google Photos and you would select whatever videos and or pictures you want. You can click them one at a time or you can select them by date, okay. You'd select all of the different pictures, whatever the pictures are that you want to um, put into your video. Once they're selected from Google Photos, you'd click these three buttons right here and you'd choose download. And you'll see down here on the left, it's gonna start downloading, okay? Those are all my photos I just set to download. It's gonna download them as a zip file. Now, if I click this little up arrow here, click show in finder, that's going to show me that folder that I just downloaded. If I double click that, it's going to open it. And these are all the pictures that I just downloaded from Google Photos. Again, I can select these by clicking on the first one, going down to the last one. While holding shift, if I click on the last one, it's going to select everything in that folder. Or if I was in that folder and I pushed Command A for all, Command A, that's going to select them all as well. Now, I need to make sure I have two finder windows open again and that I'm in one of the finder windows, I'm in the 
the folder I created for this slideshow. In the other finder window, I've got all of my pictures selected that I just downloaded from Google Photos. Now I'm going to click and drag those into the birthday slideshow folder. All right, replace because some of them are the same. You won't have this happen. This has happened to me because as I've been making this video, I've used the same photos over and over, so some of them are already there, okay? All right, so there you have it. I've downloaded all of these photos into my into my uh, folder, birthday slideshow, the one I set up for this slideshow I'm making. Now I just need to import these into iMovie. I'm going to come into iMovie, and I already did this previously to show you guys how to do it, but I'll show you one more time. Have iMovie open, command tab to navigate to Finder. Get this Finder folder where I can see both iMovie and the Finder folder. Folder In Finder, select all of the pictures and or video clips that I want to put in this slideshow. Then I click and drag them into this media area of iMovie. I let go and that's now going to import. See, you'll see it's processing the files. Just imported 67 clips. Okay, now I'm ready to start editing these. Okay, so let's just take a quick look at what we've learned so far and how you can skip ahead if you're ready to skip ahead and how you can go back and rewatch parts if you need to. Okay, so again, this is the full tutorial. This is the full video of how to make everything you need to know to, a, to not just make a slideshow one time, but to be able to make slideshows over and over and get better and better at it as you make a video using your pictures and the music and whatever else you want to add to these what I call happy face videos. So if you look down in the description, you'll see this outline of what I'm teaching here and uh, a similar outline to this at least. It might change a little bit by the time I post this on YouTube. But right now we're in the section on how to make it using iMovie on your Mac computer. And I've shown you how to gather your photos into one place. I've shown you how to organize iMovie to set up projects and to set up um, events. Think of projects as your movie, as your video. Think of events as like a bin where you put all the media, all the content, all the videos, uh, music, audio files, pictures into one place in iMovie. So you can then start editing. Showing you how to import the photos into iMovie and uh, not necessarily in that order, but I've shown you how to do that. If you need to go back, just click on the chapter where iMovie tutorial starts and you can go back and rewatch any of that if you need to. And again, these tutorials work best if you're either on a computer where you can have YouTube open and the app open so you can hit pause and then go do something and then hit pause again and then hit play and then pause and then go do something and so on. Um, if you're doing this on a phone or a mobile device, it's a lot easier if you can have a second mobile device to watch the video on while you go back and forth. Otherwise, you can just click back and forth and it will still work, but I'm just giving you tips on how to be the most convenient. All right, now we're going to learn how to add music to our uh, video. So in this section, we're going to show you how to choose your music. We're going to show you how to download royalty-free music. Royalty-free music is music that you have been given permission or you've bought permission to use it without having to pay a royalty to the copyright owner. We're going to show you how to use your copyrighted music. Copyrighted music is going to be like your popular stuff, the stuff you listen to on the radio. It's probably going to be the stuff you want to use in your video, but there's some um, disadvantages to that that we'll talk about, but we'll also show you how to do it. Uh, and it's going to be like, you know, anything on your streaming servers, that's your copyrighted music, famous bands, that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, we'll go over some different ways to use that in your music, but I will tell you now it's a lot easier to do the royalty-free stuff. Another advantage to the royalty-free stuff is that you can do it on YouTube. You can put it on YouTube without any restrictions. If you use copyrighted music, they'll usually let you put it on YouTube, but they won't let you monetize it. And they might even mute the music, although that's rare. They usually let it go. And then they put ads on your video and pay the revenue from those ads to whoever owns the copyright. So if you're okay with that, if you're just doing this to put it up on YouTube so you can watch it for work or for, for with friends and families, you're not trying to make money with it, then you can get away with copyrighted music. Um, or if you're just putting this, not even going to put it on social media, it's just for your own files, then you can get away with copyrighted music. Um, we're going to show you how to import your song into iMovie. We're going to show you how to add the song to your video. All right. And then we'll start editing the photos and videos. 
Now, you may want to go in a different order. You may want to um, add your photos and edit your photos and do this stuff down here in these other steps first and then add the music. That's fine. That's why I set it up this way. You can just click on the description on the chapter where you want to start. Then you can come back to the music part. I choose to start with the music because when I'm making a happy face video or slideshow, I like to show, I like to have it kind of match the fill. So I like to kind of pick out my song first. And to be honest, picking out music sometimes is the hardest and most time consuming part of a video. So I'm going to go in and show you how to do this now. I'm going to show you uh, three different resources for some royalty free music that's free. All right. And you can search for this stuff. There's lots of different resources and um, you can actually pay for stuff that's inexpensive as well. But I'm going to show you three free resources of royalty music that's good and easy to download. That you can use in your videos without any restrictions okay so first you need to be logged into YouTube in YouTube they have a library of royalty free music let me show you where to find that there's the uh, under your logo you click on your logo and then you go to YouTube studio and in YouTube studio over here on the left you're gonna see a section called audio library click on audio library and you'll see all this music, okay? If you click the play button, you can listen to the song. Now you can filter this by genre, mood, artist, if you know the artist's name, which you won't, but duration, how long the video is, and so on. You can filter it by whether you have to give attribution, if that's required or not. Attribution just means they'll let you use it. They'll even let you um, use it in a monetized video. But you have to put in the comments the attribution. You have to give them credit. They give you a little blurb to copy and paste, and you put that in. Okay. Um, so anyway, so here you go. Uh, let's choose something that we want by mood. You can also, if you click this duration button, it will order it by shortest to longest. Or if you click it again from longest to shortest, so that if you're trying to get a song that fits kind of the length you're going for, that's a handy tool. All right, so... Let's filter this by the mood we want. Let's say we're looking for some inspirational apply. Here's my inspirational songs. 17 minute song, wow. Find the one you want and you hover over it and over here on the right you click download and it's going to download you'll see it down here and by the way I'm using Google Chrome that's my favorite but you can use any browser um, it will download that clip and you'll see that it downloaded right here okay if I want to find where that clips at I'm going to right click it click show in finder and for the sake of staying organized I'm going to have a second finder window open where I'm going to navigate to that folder that I created for this project. In my case, it's the birthday slideshow. And I'm going to click and drag this song into that folder so that it's all in one place. All my media for this video I'm making is in one place. Makes it easy to find it and not lose stuff. Okay, You'll thank me later if you stay organized like this. So there's one resource. That's the YouTube uh, Creator Studio under Audio Library. You can also go to YouTube. And they sometimes have, there's, there's channels that create music, and they let you use it royalty-free. So the one that I like to use frequently is called no, no Copyright Sounds. So you search No Copyright. Go. Sorry, I can't type today. Sounds. And there's a YouTube channel that's actually called No Copyright Sounds. And these guys make good stuff. It's high energy. It's like electric dance type music. And uh, just choose one that you like. Free. Okay. So we'll use this one. Now, sometimes in the description, they'll give you a link to download it, but not always. So you have to rip it, it's called. And don't do this with copyrighted stuff. 
but you can do this with stuff that they give you permission to use royalty free okay so you need to get this YouTube link and you select it and copy it copy as command C on a Mac or you can go to share right here click share and this is the link you click copy and that copies this link to your keyboard now in the uh, in another tab open another tab because you still need YouTube open you're going to search YouTube to mp3 okay keep hitting my microphone cord here you tube to mp3 now warning okay these YouTube to mp3 converter sites are very spammy they sometimes have inappropriate images of scantily clad women and things like that um, so just beware and they sometimes have pop-ups they sometimes try to download stuff into your browser plugins and things like that so just be careful of that um, and if you do download anything you don't want make sure you delete it okay so YouTube to mp3 converter this is how I'm gonna get this song off of YouTube and into a format I can use it into my video right here where it says please insert a valid video URL I'm going to click command V or right click and paste okay I'm going to paste my link to that song on YouTube and click convert now I just wait they're gonna um, put it in a format I can download once that's ready I can download it okay they always trick you these are ads don't click them click this one that says download now this here is one of their spammy things that it just popped up all right close that out as you'll see down here in the right corner it downloaded this song all right so just like before I want to stay organized so I need to put this into the folder where I keep all of my media for this video so I click on this arrow click show in finder have a second finder window open to the project folder in my case it's the birthday slideshow click and drag this song into that folder okay that's how I stay organized so there's two resources you can find royalty free music and by the way if you use these guys music you have to give them attribution which means in the comments you need to say music by no copyright sound and put a link to either their website or their YouTube channel and uh, so that's one resource is no copyright sounds another one is the YouTube studio audio library right here and now I'm going to show you a third option which is a website called Ben sound Ben sound I've been using for years they make good stuff they don't put out new stuff very often they make good stuff. okay so on Ben sound most of this music is free some of it you have to buy but if you click on play once you find a song you like, all you have to do is click download. When you click download, it's going to tell you what you can and cannot do with this free license. All right? So as long as you don't do any of these things here, you're legal to use this song. If you need to do these things, then you need to purchase it for $34. Click download. Now I just downloaded that song. All right? And again, to stay organized, I'm going to click on the arrow. Go over to Finder. I'm going to make sure I have two finder windows open and I'm going to click and drag this song into my folder for this slideshow. In my case, again, it's birthday slideshow. Okay. That, by the way, was just asking if I wanted to replace it because I had already downloaded this earlier. By the way, this is my second time recording this portion of the video. It glitched and didn't record, so I had to do it again. All right. So I've now downloaded my song. I've given you three ways to download them with free royalty free music now I need to import these into my um, iMovie project so I'll come over to iMovie and open finder on top of iMovie and move the window so that you can see both your folder with your media and your iMovie project now let's choose the songs that we just downloaded Select them all by holding command while I click on multiple files and then click and drag this into iMovie. Okay. And that's going to import all these songs that I just downloaded into my iMovie project. You can also just refresh or you can import by clicking this arrow and navigate to your files, but I always find it easier to just click and drag 
from Finder, click and drag into iMovie. All right, so now you've got your your video or your audio. So now we just need to put this audio into our movie, and then we can start editing. All right, so choose which song or multiple songs you're going to use. And I just click this and I drag it down here to this audio track. Okay, that's the bottom here in my in my uh, timeline or sequence. And now this song I downloaded from Ben Sound. And again, if you put this on YouTube, you need to give them credit. Attribution of that. But there's my song. Now I'm ready to start adding my photos that I've got ready to go and my um, videos into this happy face video, into this slideshow that I'm making. Okay? So we're ready to go. If you want to use this royalty free music, you're ready to go and make your video. Now, a lot of you are going to want to use your copyrighted music. And now I'm going to show you how to use the copyrighted music. Um, in your video. Okay, now one of the most common questions that I get asked is how do I add my own songs? Like I've made multiple videos about how to do this stuff and I always get asked the question how do I how do I use my own song? Like if I've got a song on my phone, how do I how do I use that song? Well that gets a little tricky because most of us nowadays just have these streaming services like iTunes uh, Music or Apple Music or Amazon Music or Spotify or whatever. And these streaming services, and we never actually own the MP3. We never actually download the MP3. And they've spent a lot of money protecting the copyright of those songs by developing software that makes it very difficult, if possible at all, to download and import those songs into our movies, into our videos, to uh, to use. So that said, in the olden days, um, it was really easy. You would just take your CD, for example, and let's go to this folder I created for. Uh, I promise I'll show you a solution. You just might not love the solution because you might have to spend a dollar. Okay, heaven forbid you spend a dollar. So, the uh, where's my birthday shenanigans? Birthday slideshow. Okay. So in the old days, you would just take the CD, put the CD in your computer. Let's pretend that this is the CD, and you'd um, you'd click and select the files the mp3s and you drag them into your folder that was it that's how you got them on there and then you could go into iMovie and just like everything else you could import them into here just like the songs we downloaded well that's not so easy now because everything is on streaming and things like that there are uh, less than legal ways to rip songs from YouTube or to rip songs from your streaming service uh, I don't encourage you to do that I encourage you to buy them outright and um, and so I'm not going to show you how to do that. You can learn you can learn those practices from other people on YouTube. But the um, thing I will say is, if you've got a song that you actually own, like maybe you bought songs or you downloaded songs. By the way, there's a service through your local library where you can download like ten free songs a week. I forget the name of it. Do some googling, and you can download those as MP3s, or at least you could a few years ago. Last time I did it. Um, or maybe there's some songs that you bought a long time ago, okay, that are in your iTunes library, okay? Like, these aren't songs, this is the Bible, but these were downloaded and put into my iTunes library. Or maybe you bought an actual MP3 album on Amazon, or um, you can't do it on iTunes anymore, I don't think. You used to be able to buy them, like, 99 cents a song, and I don't know if you can still do that. I couldn't figure out how. Anyways... So if you've got them on a hard drive, if you've got them on a CD, if you've got these files somewhere that you can um, grab the actual file, grab the actual MP3 file like we did with the, the copyright non-copyrighted music we downloaded and drag it into iMovie, then you're golden. You're good to go with that. But if all you have is just streaming stuff or you listen to stuff on YouTube, um, you're out of luck. Unless you want to figure out one of the uh, illegal ways to download it, which I'm not going to show you on this video. So here's the way you do it. Okay. And this is going to cost you $1.29, but it's super easy. 
it's legal, and it will work. Now, disclaimer about copyrighted music. You can only use this for your own purposes, okay? You can't monetize a video with this. So, um, if you go to Amazon Music, okay? If you go to Amazon Music, you can find, you can search whatever music it is you're looking for, right? And it'll pull it up, and you can have the option to listen to it streamed on Amazon Prime, to buy the MP3 of the album, to buy the actual CD, or in some cases, the vinyl. Who knew that they had this on vinyl, huh? So you can go here. Let's do a search for Garth Brooks, since he's my favorite artist. Okay. Click on that, and then you've got the option to listen to it streaming, MP3, or the CD. I'm going to click on the MP3. Okay. Oh, and of course, Garth, he's such a sucker. <laughs> you got to buy the entire album with Garth, so I'm not going to use that as my example. Let's go back to The Greatest Showman. You can buy individual songs. So you find the specific song you want, you click the $1.29 button. You choose to pay with US dollars. And you can either play it right in your music or you can download your music. Okay. You want to download it because that's going to put an MP3 file. Here's another one I bought when I was testing this out for you. That's going to put an MP3 file on your computer. Go to Show in Finder. And now you can click this. And you can drag this into iMovie and use this song. All right. Click and drag that into your library here. Oh, let's do our best practices of always staying organized. Okay. Have this download we just got. Go to our folder where we're keeping all the stuff for this slideshow, birthday slideshow. And let's click and drag these two songs that we just bought into the birthday slideshow so they stay organized. By the way, once you've downloaded them, you can put them into your iTunes library and they'll automatically sync onto your phone as well. So you'll have them on your phone. Okay. Um, but if you got a whole old high hard drive or an old iPod with songs on them that are MP3s, you can drag these in and use them as well. All right. Then just click and drag these into iMovie. And now I got my songs. Okay, so again, this is really easy. Let's throw this into our movie by clicking and dragging it down to this bottom layer. And now I just put A Million Dreams from The Greatest Showman. Better not play too much of it, but they might not let me monetize my, uh, my video here. So anyways, so there you have it. That is how you would get a copyrighted song onto your thing. Again, there's ways to do it, workarounds that I'm not going to show you, but the safest and easiest and most legal way to do this is to just go to Amazon Music, pay $1.29 for the song you want, and download it and import it into your video project, okay? I've shown you how to edit in iMovie, I've shown you how to get your photos ready, I've shown you how to organize iMovie. I've shown you how to import the photos and videos into iMovie. I've shown you how to choose, download your music, both royalty free and copyrighted music. I've shown you how to import the, that music or those songs into iMovie. I've shown you how to add the music to your video. And, I sh and now it's time to edit your photos and videos. So now I'm going to show you how to add the photos and videos, how to customize um, the motion of the photos, how to add transitions to the photos, how to add titles, and uh, all this editing stuff. Basically, just going to go through this list, finishing touches, exporting it, and then sharing it. So let's dive in. Let's start adding our photos and videos to the um, to the video. Okay. So here we are in iMovie. We've got all our pictures and stuff. Let's select the ones we want to add. I click and drag right onto this track, the first picture I want, I can drag these in one by one, or I can click on one, hold shift, and select 
all of the pictures that I want to add. Click and drag. Okay. Now, when you hover over these pictures, it's going to show you how long the video is. Okay. And it's also going to automate adding this uh, motion. Okay. The Ken Burns effect. This is called where it pans and zooms and all that stuff. So, if so, if I go to start and I just push play. Hold on, I need to do it with a. I need to delete this song, and I need to use a royalty-free song. We'll use. Oh, that's still the greatest showman. Okay. By the way, if your music's too loud, you hover right here on this line and you can bring it down. I'm going to bring it down so you can hear me better, okay? So if I hover over these, by default it's going to make them four seconds long. I can make them longer. This is Now we're getting into customizing these and making them look good, okay? I can make these longer if I want a certain clip to last, a certain video uh, picture to last longer or video. I can click and drag to make it that those numbers on the left, 10.2, 10.3, that's how long this is. 15.3 seconds. Okay, I'll make it six seconds. So what I usually do is I usually start out by looking for major problems, okay? Like maybe a video or a picture that's upside down, a picture that I don't want in there, a picture that... Um, Maybe it's the same. Okay, right there. Those are pretty much identical pictures. They might even be identical pictures. So if I click on one of them and I push delete or backspace on my keyboard, it's going to delete it from there. Okay, those are pretty much identical as well. And they're pretty much the same as that. So I'm going to select both of those by holding Command and clicking. And click Delete or Backspace. This is just a garbage picture I don't need. I'm going to delete that. Don't really need Menards in there. Keep going. Again, same picture. Let's get rid of it. Select it, Delete. All right, these are all very similar pictures, so I need to choose which one I like the best and delete the rest. I'm going to delete these two for sure, this one versus this one. I like that one the best, so I'll delete that one, okay? Delete that. Let's delete these two. Okay, so again, you're just going to run through and, and delete any pictures you don't want, fix any obvious mistakes like that. This is 2.8 seconds of black. Let's delete that. And you can get as carried away as you want with customizing this. Maybe you want a, a picture to stay on for an entire section of a song. You can do that. Um, I'm not going to do that on this example video. Okay, so there you have it. You've put those in. If you're happy with that, you're done. But there's some stuff you can do too that's kind of fun um, to customize things a little bit further, okay? So first off, let's say that a picture is not zooming in where we want it to. It just kind of guesses what we want. Let's use this one as an example. Okay, let's say I don't really like that pan that's called. That's a pan, okay? Or let's use this one. So I, this one starts in on a close zoom and then it zooms out. For me, it shows my son. But it barely shows my son. Okay, I'd like to show more of my son. So if I click on this, if I double click, and up here in this window, you'll see this crop tool right here and the Ken Burns effect. Okay, the Ken Burns effect is that effect where you move motion. They named it after him because he did it in all his documentaries. All right. So this frame is where it starts. This one's where it ends. Okay. So if I want to see more of my son, 
I can click and drag this or even zoom in more on my son by hovering on this corner. Okay, you can play around with this and I can customize that that camera move. Okay, so now if I watch what happens, I changed it so you see more of my son. Okay. Same thing if I don't like one of these pans or one of these moves. By the way, iMovie, iMovie does a pretty good job of making it look good, but maybe you got an upside down picture or maybe you don't like it, what it zooms in on. I've had it zoom in on like my crotch <laughs> or my wife's chest or, you know, awkward things like that. And so I've edited them for th reasons like that. But there you have it. That's how you customize those. Now, you may want to add transitions or titles to this, okay? This is really simple. So let's start with a transition. I always like my videos to fade from black or fade in. You can use either fade to black or cross dissolve at the start of your video. And that'll make it start black and fade in. Okay, and so don't get carried away. Honestly, I use fade to black, I use fade to white, I use cross dissolve, sometimes cross blur. That's 90% of my transitions. Once in a while, if I'm going for a certain effect, I'll use some of these others, okay? But you can play around with it and kind of see what looks cool. But there's all these different transitions. You click these and you drag these in between the clips, okay? My favorite is the cross dissolve. And if you hover over them, they'll show you how long they are. One second. Okay. So that's your standard transition is going to be one second. Your default means it's going to take one second transition from the previous picture to the next. So let's say you want a long, slow cross dissolve. You can do that. You have to just double click it. And change the duration of the transition to we'll say five point that means five seconds click apply okay now I have a five second transition let's see what that looks like see how slow that is nice and slow transition okay you can do that however you want you can add a wipe all these different transitions so now go through if you want transitions if you like transitions Choose which ones you like. Again, it looks cheesy if you're just using these more crazy transitions just for kicks, like I am right now, just to show you examples. Um, again, I mostly just use the cross dissolve. But that's what it looks like when you add transitions. So that's pretty much all there is to it. You just need to go through and decide where you want transitions. Um, certain types of music. Certain types of music make more sense to have transitions than others. Like sometimes if it's like a slow instrumental piece, I'll have these long, slow transitions. Um, sometimes I'll edit to the beat, meaning every time a beat hits, or all my cuts, my edits are on beats. If that's the case, I don't use transitions. I just have it go boom, 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 boom to the next one. Okay. All right. I think that's pretty much it. Let me see if I missed anything on my list. Oh, yeah, titles. Okay. So we've added transitions, we've added our photos and videos, we've customized the photos and videos, we've added transitions, now let's add titles, and I'll show you effects, okay? iMovie does let you do effects to things, so if you double click on one of these, you've got these different effects. This is where you can change colors of things, you know, mess with this, you can also make things look really bad doing this, so don't go too crazy, but if you do change the brightness and stuff, you can play around with this. If you do um, go too far and it looks really bad, you can click reset. And that will reset everything. Okay. Um, these are other settings too, like white balancing and things like that. Tell it what color is white, and that will change the color of your video. It's a nice little feature. iMovie knew, never used to do this. All right. This here, these are filters. Okay. Clip filter. If you click on if you click on that, this is where you can do these filters that like Instagram and those things do all the time. Okay. I did a comic book, that's kind of a cool filter if you're doing certain things. Okay. So 
there's those effects you can play around with if you choose to. All right, and then let me show you audio. Um, I'll show you what that when I do the finishing touches. Um, let's show you how to add titles, okay? So a title is just a graphic that says, you know, the name of the video or credits like this. Okay, these are like the credits. This could be like the title of your video or these are called lower thirds. Okay, this is usually used just to tell you the name of the person talking like if you're interviewing someone, show the name of them. So for the sake of a slideshow, I'm just going to put this on the front and then name it whatever the name of your slideshow video is, right? I don't know why it's being slow. Okay, if you double click on this, you can then edit the name of it. Family Fun 2017, okay? You can choose a different font here. Now make sure you have something that can be read easily. You can choose a color for the font. Usually whites and yellows and blacks, depending on the background, are your best bet. Blues and reds usually don't look very good. Um, they're hard to read usually. You can change the justification, left and right justification. You can change the size of it. All right. What I haven't figured out how to do in iMovie is change the location of it. Like move it, you can do that in more um, professional editing software. Um, but I haven't figured out how to move the location of that in iMovie because it's just whatever, it's wherever the animation you chose is, okay? So now, and I don't know why it didn't save. It does this to me once in a while. I think I didn't click off of it. Okay. Click off, now it's saved. So there, if I go to the start of this and push play, You'll see my title shows up, and then it fades into my son riding his bike. Okay, and again, this 3.5 seconds—that's the duration of the title. If I want it on the screen longer or shorter, I just click and drag like that. Now I got an 11-second title, big, nice, long, slow title. All right, so that's how you add titles. You can also add titles on top of things. Um, you can choose when you want. You can drag it. On, right onto the clip, it'll show up up here. Double click it, now you can edit it. All right, again, if you want it longer, you can click and drag. Now we got this little title labeling this picture. Okay, so that's how you add titles. Um, let's see what we're missing here. All right. The finishing touches, I'm going to show you how to tweak audio a little bit in these finishing touches, okay? If you had video clips, mine are all audio, or sorry, mine are all pictures in this one. But if you had video clips and you wanted to hear the audio, you would see, just like you see down here on the music, you'd see a volume level, and you could change the volume of your clips to see how loud or soft they are. Um, since these are pictures, there's no audio to edit, okay? So all I'm going to do for these finishing touches is I'm going to set my audio to 100% because it's a slideshow. There's no other music or there's no other noise. I'm going to watch it. Okay, I would watch this all the way through and make sure there's nothing else I want to change. And then once I'm all done... I need to make sure that the audio ends at the right time, okay? Like maybe the audio ended before my clip did, and if that was the case, so let's say that I had a bunch of pictures that went past the audio track, I'd have to either add another song or copy and paste this one and play it again, okay? Otherwise it will sound weird that there's no music on the rest of it. In this case, the music's longer than the video, so what I'm going to do here at the end for my finishing touches is I'm going to have a fade, a fade out to black at the end, so fades to black and in my case I'm just going to add a little simple thanks for watching click off so it saves it and now you'll see okay 
you know, I can make it whatever length I want. And that animation <laughs> Yeah, it automatically fades to black. And so I want my song to end shortly after the the pictures do. So I'm going to grab the end of this, click and drag it. And I believe it will automatically fade the music out. Let's see. Yeah, it faded it out, but it was a quick fade out. Okay. So I'm going to show you a trick so you can make the music fade out, have it start right about the time that the words start to fade out. You can have the music start to fade out at the same time. What you're going to need to do is you're going to need to zoom in on this more. So this here right here, this is how you zoom in on your timeline to be more precise. Okay, this is zoomed all the way out. This is zoomed all the way in. The more you're zoomed in, the more precise you can be with your edits. So we're going to zoom in a little bit. And this dot right here, this green dot when I hover, that's where it starts to fade out. So right now my song fades out from there to there, which is like not even a second. So I'm going to click this and drag this to right there. Now it's like 121. It's almost two seconds of fade out. So if I go before this, push play. Now I have a slower fade out, and you can adjust that. All right, so that's pretty much it for my finishing touches. I just watch it, uh, make sure there's nothing else I want to change. If there is, I change it. I make sure that the audio lines up how I want. I fade out the audio at the end. I make sure my video is fading out at the start. And finish and now I'm ready to export okay that's our next step exporting so to export from iMovie this is when we're done iMovie calls it sharing we're gonna click this button right here this is if you hover over it it will it will have the share option I'm gonna click that share now I could go straight to YouTube and Facebook or email it I don't want to do either of those because um, sometimes it glitches and doesn't work I want to have a copy of this on my computer so I'm going to hit export file and now I'm going to name this whatever I want to name it we'll call it family fun 2017 since that's what the title says on the video okay and then um, you can add a description and tags if you want. I'm not going to bother with that. You want the resolution to be whatever you, you feel as high as possible. 1080p, unless you filmed it on something that wasn't 1080p. Most likely you filmed it on 1080p or even 4K. So you have it on 1080p. Click Next. And then navigate over here to the folder where you kept all your content in. Again, organization is key. Mine was under Documents. This is where we put everything for, for this project. Birthday slideshow is where I put it. It's where all my media is. And then I'm just going to click Save. All right. It's now exporting. This circle shows the status of it. This circle is going to um, wind. And once it fills up, it means it's done. See, there it goes. That little pie chart. Once that's done, my video is ready to go. All right. It just finished. It'll send me a little message here in a second saying it's done. There we go. Shared successfully. I can show it in Finder or click close. Show just takes me to where it's located in Finder, which if I stayed organized is under the folder that I uh, created for everything and then find Family Fun. So you can actually just test this by pushing the selecting it, pushing the space bar. <laughs> Watch it, make sure it looks good. Assuming everything looks good, your video is now done. Your slideshow is now ready to do what you're going to do with it. Email it to whoever you're going to email it to. Upload it to YouTube if that's what you're going to do with it. Put it on Facebook if that's what you're going to do with it. I'm now going to show you how to share the file on YouTube and Facebook. And I might show you Instagram, okay? All right, so we got to go and log into our YouTube account.
once we're logged into our YouTube account, you're going to click this. Uh, let me just go to YouTube. I'm already where I want to be, but let me show you. Okay. All right. So here on YouTube, we're going to click this create button right here, this little camera at the top, click create and upload video. Now I can click select file and it will open a, a window and I'll just navigate to the folder where I put my video. Okay, and then I could click open and that would upload it. But I usually do it this other way because it's easier. I usually do what you've seen me do a hundred times now. And I have my finder window opened on top of it. And I grab the video and I click and drag it and I let go. And it's going to start uploading. All right, I can change the name now if I want. I can add some um, a description. If you're trying to show up in search engines, you'll want to do something that's relevant to the keywords you're, you're targeting. I can add this to a playlist if I'd like to, or create a new playlist for it. Um, choose if it's for kids or not. Usually the answer is going to be no. If you put that it's for kids, then you won't be able to have um, comments on it. By saying it's not for kids doesn't mean it's like R-rated. It just means that you didn't make it specifically for kids. Okay. All right. Age restrictions. That should be no. You shouldn't. If if you're making videos that aren't appropriate for people over 18, shame on you. Shouldn't be doing that. Um, click more options. You can add tags here. These are things like keywords people might search for your your video. It'll also well. Yours probably won't suggest these. This is because I pay for a thing called TubeBuddy, but it suggests, TubeBuddy suggests keywords for me. All right. Choose what language your video's in. You don't necessarily have to do this, but it's a good idea to do it. If you want to know when you made this video, you can choose the date it was recorded. Choose what license you want. Usually just leave the standard YouTube license. Choose a category. Choose whether you want to get comments. This is uh, people are mean on social media, so allow all comments. Just lets anything go. Hold potentially inappropriate comments for review. That means if YouTube thinks that they left a, a bad comment, an inappropriate comment, they'll warn you, and you can decide if you want to approve it. Or you can hold all comments for review, or you can disable comments. If you disable them, nobody can comment. If you hold all for review, that's what I do on kid videos. Um, then you can read the comments and delete the ones that you don't want. Okay. All right. Then you click next. If you have the option to monetize and you want to, you can turn that on. Um, you may or may not have that option. Okay. We're going to say off for now, just in case you don't have that option. Click next. Video elements. These are, you know how on YouTube um, a video will play. And it says, hey, watch this video, or check this video out, or go to this website, or whatever, and it has a link you can click. That's where you add those kind of things. It's right here. That's end screens and, and cards. End screens happen just at the end of the video. Cards can happen anywhere in the video. A little thing pops up and, and links you to another video or playlist, okay? I'm just going to leave that alone for now. Now you decide the visibility of it, okay? Is it going to be private? Okay, let me explain the differences between these, and you can choose what you want to do. Private means that nobody can see it unless you specifically add their email address to a safe list for that video, and then they're allowed to see it. That's the most private it gets. Unlisted means nobody's going to find it in a search engine, but anyone who has this link, which you can copy by pushing this rectangle right here, okay, you can copy that and send that to people. Anyone who has that link will be able to see the video. So you may send it to five people, but if they send it to five people, then now there's 30 people that can see it, okay? And if they send it to other people, so in other words, anyone with the link can see it, but it's not going to show up in search engines. All right, public means anyone can see it. Anyone can stumble on it from any corner of the Internet. 
and watch your video. Okay, I'm going to leave this one on public and I'm going to set it as a premiere because I think it's kind of fun on your YouTube channel to have a premiere show up that says, hey, new video is playing in two minutes and it tells all your subscribers and they can watch the premiere. Or you can schedule it out to have it go on on a certain date and time. Okay, we'll just go with the public and set as instant premiere. This shows me the pro how far along it is. It's already uploaded. The processing is 54% done. And now I click Publish. All right. This is going to finish processing. As soon as it's done processing, the premiere will start. And it will give you like a little countdown timer for about a minute. And then your video will play if you chose to do a premiere. From then on, you just take that link and you share that with anyone you want to share that with on Facebook or emails or texts, whatever it is. That's how you upload your video to YouTube. Now let me show you how to upload your video to Facebook, okay? Let's go to Facebook. Go to your, um, your page and just cl either click right here to start editing or click photo video, okay? Once you're in here, you can either click this photo video and navigate to it to the folder it's in or you can do what I prefer to do which is click and drag have the um, finder window open navigate to the folder where your video is click on your video and drag it in write something about it alright <laughs> and mine's in Portuguese but that says publish okay click publish and it now uploads your video. By the way, if that publish button wasn't allowing you to click, it's because it hadn't finished uploading your video. All right, and there you have it. Once that's done processing, this is the progress. You're going to be able to watch it and people will be able to see that video on Facebook. So that's it. Um, I'm not gonna show you on Instagram how to do this, but what you gotta do is you've gotta get this file onto your phone because you can only upload to Instagram on your phone but get this file to your phone and then um, you can upload it to Instagram from there. So that's it. Hope you liked that. Hope that was helpful.